Just outside Sydney, in a patch of farmland once known for sheep and cattle, something unprecedented is taking shape. A brand new international airport, the first Australia's built from scratch in over 50 years. It'll be curfew free, A380 capable and powered by solar. But this isn't just an airport. It's the foundation of an entirely new city designed to support over 100,000 jobs, span more than 11,000 hectares and reshape the future of Western Sydney. The project is called Western Sydney International and it's not just a response to a crowded airport. It's a $40 billion gamble on a new way of building cities, one that starts not with roads or housing, but with a runway. So what exactly is being built out here? Why does Sydney need a second airport? And why would you need an entire city just to build one? Sydney's main airport, Kingsford Smith, is one of the oldest in the world. It opened in 1919 and has grown ever since, but now it's running out of room. The airport sits hemmed in between Botany Bay and dense suburbs. That makes expansion impossible and flight paths controversial. Worse still, it operates under a strict nighttime curfew. Between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m., no flights can take off or land, no matter the delays, demands, or economic pressure. It also uses two intersecting runways, limiting its efficiency and capacity. That's a major problem for a city expected to grow from 5 to 7 million people, with air travel projected to surge well beyond current limits. Sydney needed more space and more flexibility. So in 2014, the government made the call. A new international airport will be built at Badgeries Creek, 44 kilometres west of the CBD. This time, there would be no curfew, no expansion limits and plenty of room to grow. That's where the Western Sydney International, also known as Nancy Bird Walton Airport, comes in. Planners here had one mission, design for the future, not the past. At the centre of it all, a 3,700-metre Code F runway. Long enough for an Airbus A380 to land with room to spare, and wide enough to support parallel taxiways, rapid exits and flexible cargo ops. The four-level terminal, spanning 110,000 square metres, was designed by Zaha Hadid Architects and Cox Architecture. It merges both domestic and international operations under one roof to speed up connections and simplify circulation. But it's not just about function, it's about experience. Look up and you'll see a timber-toned ceiling that curves like the Blue Mountains. Walk through the concourse and you're bathed in natural light filtered like the canopy of a eucalyptus forest. Even the skylights were engineered to mirror how sunlight drips through the Australian bush. And above that ceiling, a different kind of design. 6,000 solar panels helping power the airport day and night. That's on top of rainwater harvesting, high efficiency systems, and a structure that exceeds national energy standards by more than 10%. The target? A five-star Green Star rating one of the highest benchmarks for sustainable design in Australia. From above, the terminal looks sculpted. From below, it's loaded with hidden engineering. 75-metre roof panels, some of the longest ever installed in Australia. A modular interior spine, ready to expand, and foundations layered with 4.5 million tonnes of sandstone, compacted to support future aircraft loads. All of this, the terminal, runway, taxiways, roads, is part of Stage 1, budgeted at around 3.45 billion US dollars. Construction began in 2018. Today, the runway is paved, the terminal is topped out, and the project is more than 80% complete, tracking ahead of schedule. But here's the wild part. What's built so far is just the starter kit because this airport was never meant to stand alone. The design assumes and depends on a city forming around it. The metro line, the business park, the workforce. They're not afterthoughts, they're essential. And if the runway is the spine, the city is supposed to become the beating heart. This is Bradfield, a city being built entirely from scratch. No streets, no schools, no suburbs. Just a vision, a master plan, 
and the space to make it real. It's the first major new city planned in Australia in over a century. But Bradfield is just the centrepiece. Zoom out and you get the full picture. The Western Sydney Aerotropolis, a 21st century airport-driven urban ecosystem stretching across more than 11,000 hectares and 10 precincts. It's not a suburb. It's not an industrial zone. It's an entire urban economy planned around a single airport from day one. The idea is bold. Build everything all at once, all connected. Jobs, housing, education, logistics, research, transport, not in stages, but in sync. That means research campuses tied to universities, aerospace and defence hubs near air freight terminals, advanced manufacturing districts with direct access to global cargo, and residential zones with rail lines that run straight to the terminal. Already, the private sector has noticed more than $14 billion in investment has been committed, and in early 2025, the first major facility opened its doors, an advanced manufacturing research centre kick-starting the innovation district around the airport. To support all of this, the infrastructure had to arrive first. Here's what's already underway. Sydney Metro Western Sydney Airport Line, a 23-kilometre underground rail system with six new stations, including two inside the airport precinct. Trains will connect Bradfield to the broader city and eventually the wider state. M12 Motorway, a $2 billion expressway designed to funnel traffic directly into the airport precinct, linking it to Sydney's broader motorway network. Upgrades to the Northern Road and Bringelli Road add another $2.1 billion to the total, all designed to make this new region accessible by car, truck, rail and bus from day one. In total, regional infrastructure investments just outside the airport fence now exceed $12.35 billion US dollars. But this isn't just about convenience, it's a requirement. An airport on this scale can't operate in isolation. It needs tens of thousands of workers, nearby logistics, tech campuses and reliable public transport just to function. And none of that existed at Badgerys Creek. So instead of building an airport near a city, Australia is building a city to support the airport. It's an inversion of how aviation hubs have traditionally evolved, and it flips the usual logic on its head. Most airports grow into cities over time. This one, the city, is being built first, because without it, the airport can't reach its full potential. Western Sydney International is designed to scale over decades. The initial capacity at opening in 2026 is 10 million passengers per year, but the ultimate target? 82 million passengers annually, putting it among the busiest airports on Earth. To get there, the plan includes a second parallel runway, additional terminals, massive cargo and logistics hubs, and upgrades to fuel, freight and public transit systems. But none of this is being built all at once. Instead, WSI is using a modular construction strategy. The terminal's spine can be extended section by section. The runway layout already allows for expansion, and land has been preserved for future rail and industrial zones. It's flexible, it's smart, but it only works if political support, funding and private investment stay strong, not just for five years, but for 40. That's because big plans come with big risks. The most controversial is noise. WSI's 24-7 operation is a game-changer for airlines, but it also means night flights over residential neighbourhoods. Community groups and health experts have raised concerns about sleep disturbance, heart health and mental well-being. Then there's coordination. The airport, metro line, highways, freight hubs and Bradfield City all depend on perfect timing across three levels of government and eight local councils. If even one part slips behind schedule, the whole system suffers. Finally, there's the long game. Projects like this take decades, and history is full of Aerotropolis-style projects that started strong but stalled. Songdo, South Korea, Daxing Airport's logistics zones in China, Ciudad Real, Spain. Australia has done something few others dared, integrated planning from day one. 
But even the best blueprints can struggle when politics shifts, budgets tighten, or public trust wavers. Western Sydney International is on time, on budget, and has already landed its first test plane. Qantas, Singapore Airlines, and Air New Zealand have all signed on. The rail line is under construction, and the city is beginning to take shape. But what happens next will determine whether this becomes Australia's next great success story or just another blueprint that never quite took off. So what do you think? Can an airport really build a whole city? Or is this $40 billion vision too ambitious to work? Let us know in the comments and subscribe to Megabills for more deep dives into the world's boldest infrastructure projects.